<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, we just have a few more people joining, so we are going to give them just a couple of more minutes. Um, we'll start right at 9.05 this morning. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we are going to be covering the final session uh, today of the Illinois Works Reporting System. You should have all received an agenda last night uh, that outlined all of the topics we're going to cover today. We're really going to be focused, <clears throat> excuse me, on program completion, transition, dashboards, reports, and so in just a moment here, I'm going to hand it off to LaToya McCray. So many of you um, have already seen her in our sessions or you have had a one-on-one -on -one session with her. LaToya works with uh, Southern Illinois University with their Center for Workforce Development. Uh, she has been essential in the building of the Illinois Works Reporting System. So she knows it um, in and out. Um, so please feel free to ask questions throughout the session. Um, she's going to be doing a, a walkthrough with a PowerPoint and then a hands-on demo. And that will take to just about 11 a.m. And then from 11 to noon, that is just going to be open question time. So you all have had time to use the system, to explore the system. I'm sure questions have come up. So that hour will be reserved uh, for those questions. 
if you uh, don't have questions or uh, you need to hop off, feel free to do so, but that is time that is available to you. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hand it off to LaToya to begin our session. Thank you so much again for attending. Thank you so much, Christine, for the lovely um, introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope everyone had their coffee or tea to get them up this morning. But like Christine said, this is our last um, session, but I will be here throughout your program to provide you any technical assistance. So for today's agenda, like Christine said, we're going to cover program completion and follow-up information that is located on the Illinois Works reporting system. And those screens will be the program completion status, case notes and employer follow-up, and at the tail end of the training, we're going to look at reports in the dashboard. And so after that presentation, we'll go into the Illinois Works reporting system using Illinois WorkNet, and we're going to start putting in some real or test data um, as it relates to program completion, and then at the end, We'll let you know what next steps are needed for the service provider program managers and also service providers. And I want to be um, clear throughout this training: certain um, sections of this um, of the screen does not apply to all. So I'll make sure that I make a uh, distinction on when we get to those screens and also during the demo. So as you know, the Illinois Works Reporting System is powered by Illinois WorkNet. It is your system for grantees and Illinois Work staff, also known as service providers, to manage and update participant information related to intake, training, and support services, follow-up, reports, and more. So there's various roles in the system. So most of you are service providers. You'll have access to grantee participant information and dashboards. For those that are assigned as a service provider program administrator, you will be designated um, to put in information in regards to grantee information and specific reports. Again, access to Illinois WorkNet's user management tool, you'll have that um, resource to you as well. Program managers, have access to regional level um, information related to grants and also customer information and reports and super administrators, which is like myself or Christina Norman, they will have access to the entire suite of the Illinois Works Reporting System tool. So for this training, we're going to focus on case notes and follow-up and reporting. So, in the Illinois Work Reporting System, we have a program completion follow-up. This is right after the training services that you enter in. So, that tool allows service providers to enter program completion status and employee information for individuals within the pre-apprenticeship program. On that screen, you are allowed to update the status of a participant stating if they are complete or not complete, and employer follow-up information. So once that individual has completed the program, you will follow up with him or her to ensure if they received employment after the program has ended and just to do some follow-up with them as it relates to employment. So also on the completion and follow-up screen, after you have entered the completion status of that individual, you can add case notes. Case notes are very critical just to make sure you have clear and transparent communication with the participant, or you can use the case note tool to just write notes that you need um, for um, your reference. And so the case notes, you, some of you probably have started using the case notes, but again, those fields on the case note include tasks, contact date, subject, message, send case note, and send message or email. 
One of the things I like about the case notes is that you have an option to send an Illinois WorkNet message to your participant, or you can send it as an email. So it's very flexible on how information, or in this case, case notes, are delivered to participants. So going back, that completion status, right? There are various status types. So one is completion status. The participant has actively enrolled in the program and they have completed all the requirements for the training. Completion and transition. Participants are still enrolled in the program but haven't met requirements. Complete, so the next one is post program active training. That's when the participant has successfully completed the program, receives transitional services, and now is able to be tracked on a quarterly basis throughout for one year. And the last status is long-term tracking. The Office of Illinois Works, which is Christine and Norman and other parties, will have the ability to utilize that status type to uh, match data related to tracking employment status, apprentice status, and benefits that that individual may receive. Now, follow-up. As you can see on the screen, on the screenshot, it's the next button that says Add Employer Follow-up. This follow-up tool allows service providers to enter individuals' employment information after completing the pre-apprenticeship program. So on this um, follow-up tool, you'll see various fields. So you will see the employer's name, if they were employed or not, their start date, their job title, what industry he, him or her is in, the address, along with the hourly wage paid, job duties, and hours per week. Any questions so far? Okay. Not in the chat. No. So that is the entire screen related to Illinois Works. So now once you have entered in all your information, now it's time to look at some reports. And so the reports will allow you to look at um, intake, um, eligibility, and um, this is the screen on how to access your reports in the Customer Support Center. So to access your Illinois Works reporting system reports, you go to IllinoisWorkNet.com, then you'll log into your Illinois WorkNet account, then you will select My Dashboard, and then select Customer Support Center. Then on the right corner of the top menu, you will see like bars, like a bar chart. That is the reports icon. Once you select that icon, you're going to see a list under project and category, and you're going to select Illinois Work. So this is how the report screen looks like. Once you select your category, and again, in this demo, you may see multiple reports on my end because I am a super user. However, on your end, you will only see reports based on the projects that you are enrolled in. So in this case, Illinois Works, some of you may be working on youth career pathways and such forth. So for the Illinois Works reporting system, you will have access to the following reports. Guarantee information, student support services report, and credentials. And please note, only service provider program managers and super administrators will have access to the grantee information report. So the first report is the grantee information report. This report provides a high-level overview of Illinois Works pre-apprenticeship program the actual number of participants, the sectors, grant information, and recent status updates. So this is a screenshot of the grantee information report. And as you can see, the various columns, grant number, project name will be Universal Illinois Works, the grantee's name, projected number of participants, 
num actual number of participants, the sector, the grant amount, and status update. Also on this report, you can filter data related to grantee information along with exporting the report in an Excel um, spreadsheet. Student Services Report. So the Student Services Report provides a, a overview of Illinois Workman's Program um, and participant information. So the sections on this report relates to program outreach, underrepresented populations, and services. And also on this report, you can filter by race and ethnicity, veteran status, gender, and age. The Credentials Report. The Credentials Report provides service providers, again, overview of participants' credentials earned in total by the industry, the provider, the type, and the time or time frame or date. So once you've accessed those reports, then you can start looking more in depth into the Illinois Works reporting um, system and look at dashboards. So to access your dashboards, again, we'll follow the same steps by going into our Illinois WorkFed account, accessing the Customer Support Center. So instead of going to your right-hand side, now you're on the left-hand side of the page and you're looking at dashboards. You'll click on dashboards and there will be a drop-down and you're going to select Illinois Works Reporting System. So the dashboard provides real-time data showing where participants are in the intake and eligibility process all throughout the program. And so service providers can filter um, by dates. And as you can see here, there are various sections. So the first section, you will see red flag. This helps to notify you if there are in areas in which you need to address. So um, uh, absences, post assessments, and things that's anything that's um, past due. So you'll see in the columns you have the actual number, the percentage, the best, along with the actual versus the accepted, um, expected in the network average. So basically on this dashboard, you're really assessing your results, how you are doing in the program, if there's anything that you need to follow up on or make some interventions to ensure that the participants get the services that they need to successfully complete the program. So for today's demo, you will not really have access to this because most of you still need to fill out application information, um, recruitment, along with completing the training and services. However, once you start filling out that information, you'll see the data populate. So I would recommend everyone to complete those various tests that was given during the training um, and two weeks ago and make sure that information is there and this dashboard will be available to you so you can see the real time data around Monday the latest. So please, I encourage everyone to complete the um, various steps before looking at the dashboard and also report. Again, as you all know, that was the end of the reporting in the dashboard features located on the Illinois Works reporting system. Again, you all have access to all the resources and tools available to Illinois Works and you will see that information located on the Partners Guide. And this is information here, and this is the link you can refer to. So next steps. So next steps, we need all service provider program administrators to enter their grant information on the grant detail screen. If you have yet to do so, please do that as soon as possible because the services that you add on that grantee detail screen 
will affect your service providers for entering the accurate um, services for your assigned organization. So service providers, I know during these trainings we've created test accounts. So what I would like you all to do is if you can email me and identify the test accounts that you've cre created in your organization and send that list to me as soon as possible. This way, when we go back into the system, we can clear out all that test data and you'll just have live real data in your um, Illinois Works reporting system. Service providers will continue to enter an intake and eligibility information. And again, we ask that all users um, will review the Illinois Works Report and dashboards for specific provider information. And again, if, the, if you need access to the system, please contact your service provider program administrator along with copying Christine and Norman and myself on the email. And so that is the end of my presentation. Before we go into Illinois Work um, WorkNet, um, is there any questions thus far? We have no questions in the chat. Okay. And again, this is my contact information here. So if everyone at this time can log into Illinois WorkNet, we'll give everyone around, right now the time is currently 9.23, we'll give everyone three minutes to access their Illinois WorkNet account. If you can put in the chat, if you access your Illinois WorkNet account, we can move forward. Okay. So while you're on Illinois WorkNet, I would like everyone to click on my dashboard. And under Partner Tools, I need you to click on Customer Support Center. I'm just I want to drive over in the screen. Can you see this screen here that says um, groups search? So right now, again, as you can see, I have multiple groups. Just um, in the group name, enter. Illinois abbreviated IL work. So you should see your assigned organization and click on that. So right now we're going to look at program completion information on that screen. I'm going to stop sharing because it seems like there is a lag in the system. So we start sharing and reshare again. Mm -hmm. 
Has anyone been able to access their Illinois Works account? Bear with me, everyone. There's still a lag. If Jonathan or Eric is on, can you see if you can um, make the screen allow to go faster so I can access the account? I'm going to reshare my screen again. Can you see my screen? And again, I am a super user, so I have access to multiple accounts. But if you go on to, I'm going to just select my test account so you all can see. So we are currently on the participant and recruitment and engagement tab or screen. So you have a list of all your customers, whether they are inquiries, not enrolled, or applicants. At this time, do you have any participants that's in the category or status applicant? Okay. Okay. So I see that there is a lag on your end as well. Okay. Give me one second. Can you all see my screen? So as we're working with this, I'm contacting our programmers to see if we can expedite this technical issue. So at the, in the meantime, don't want to delay anyone's time. And of course, hands-on experience is the best. But as we know, technology sometimes has a mind of its own. So while I'm on my test account, as you all can see my screen, once that individual is in the status of an applicant, we're going to look at the account by clicking on the last name, which leads us to a hyperlink to the intake screen. Okay. So as you can see, the last tab is the program slash follow-up tab. So before I move forward, if everyone can log out of Illinois WorkNet and log back in and, and try to locate, not try, but go into the Customer Support Center and access your Illinois Works account and see if that 
will work. And please let me know your responses in the chat. Is everyone entering? Okay. 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 So I'm going to go back. So everyone is still experiencing um some loading issues but don't fret we're going to just use this test data and i'm going to start all over so again on the participant recruitment and engagement page you're going to find your applicant right so here is my applicant for this program under this provider chicago provider one i'm going to select their last name which will direct me to the overview screen. However, in this training, we're going to look at the program completion and follow-up. So the first step is to add or enter your completion status for this individual. So you will select the Add Completion Status button and add the completion status. Again, if the participant completed all the program requirements, they've completed the program. The next one is complete and in transition. Incomplete, meaning that they are in the program, but they have not met any of the requirements. Post-program active training, I mean tracking, and long-term tracking. So in this case, I'm going to select complete. And then once I select the complete status, I'm going to select save. There will be a message stating that the added completion status has been added to this person's account. You can click on OK. If you made a mistake, you can always go back. It's like, oh, no, I just checked my records. They're not in complete status. They're incomplete. And once you select incomplete, you're going to select the reason why. So these are the various choices. They changed their mind. They decided that they didn't want to complete the program because they have a job opportunity. They're going straight into training or they're going to move, lifestyle changes, and other. This will be very helpful when you select the reason to add more details in your case note. So let's just say they moved out of um, Illinois. And you update this completion status, and it will stay incomplete. But I want to go in and make a case note for that particular status. And let's just say, we can just say training, right? This entire training program. So today's date, I put in the subject line and complete status. Maybe the participant's name, you just say um, pop. Corn. 
and then the message you can say to the individual, okay, according to our records, you have to complete the following training courses or complete attendance or makeup sessions on these dates and times for these trainings in order to complete the apprentice um, program, pre-apprentice program. So I'm gonna just put tests here. And I want to send this as a message, also as an email. And then when I select add case note, click on this. It lets me know that the case note was successfully added. And we are there. Any questions when I go to the program switch? Okay. Is there any possible way, Sandra, you can speak at this current moment so I can be clear of the question that you're asking at this time? Okay. Can you provide more details in the chat regarding your question? Okay, thank you for that. The question in the chat is, does an email address show up when selecting to send to email? No, it does not show up. Everything that you've entered in on the application, that email address that's on the application is in the system on the back end. So when you send an email, it will literally send that um, message to that person's email address. Betty, are you asking this question in case someone needs to change their email? Great. So what you will do is just update the email on the original application. Any other person on this call have any questions in regards to what I just showed you for program completion status and case notes? Okay. So the next step is add employer follow-up. So this person's completed the program, they have all the skill sets and now credentials to start working in um, a trade, possibly. So, or you can just follow up if this employee um, and participant is employed. So the add employment follow-up, just a form for you to complete, and it starts with, are you com currently employed by this employer? And it's asking again, the participant that was in the program. So we either select yes or no. And it's a case, let's just say, Popcorn did receive a job opportunity. And they're at ABC Trade School, right? And they started on the, let's just say, we are on the 17th, they started on the 14th. Their job title is a, a welder. And the industry, of course, will be, let's just say, construction. You're entering your street information. And then the city. The state. 
zip code, wages, let's just say they make $20 an hour. And the duties, just going to put that for now. And they work 40 hours a week. And this is their um, ad employment follow-up information, Sandra, in case that, that participant completed the training program and you're just following up with them to see if they're employed after the program. Once you've entered in this information, click Save. A message box comes up and it says employment follow-up has been added. So once you've added that employment, again, you will see the name of the employer, the industry, the job title, and when they've worked, and if it's present, or if there was an end date, and you will see it there. And benchmarks won't be relevant. Any questions in regards to the ad follow-up? So at this time, is anyone able to get into their Illinois WorkNet account? Put your responses in the chat. Okay. So A question is in a chat, do we collect any employment information the participant has even if it's not trades related or is the system just for trades related experiences? So for this system, you can enter in any job related information. It's not specifically towards a trade. That's if a person decided to continue through that career path. I only have one person that's informing me that they are on the group page. Is anyone else in? Okay, so if you're on the group page, look up your Illinois Works account, again, that is abbreviated for Illinois I-L, capital I-L, and Works, and then click on Search. Okay. Eric, if you are still on the call, and Jonathan, we have some participants that are experiencing an error message. And again, I am here until noon. So at this time, while they are working on fixing that error, I can go back. Um, and I just want to show you the other things from my test account. Okay. 
So we've entered all that information on the program completion and follow-up tab. Now I want to start to look at reports. So again, while you're on the screen, you do not have to go back to your My Dashboard and go into Customer Support Center. You can see these features listed up top on the Illinois Works Reporting System as well. And again, that icon for reports looks like a bar chart. And if you click on here, So again, I have a super admin account. And when you are on reports, you will only have access to the reports based on the programs that you are assigned to. So for Illinois Works, the first report we spoke about was the grant T information report, which is here. You'll see a hyperlink that says grant T information. You'll click on that. And these are all the provider information. Again, I have a super admin account, but you will only have access to your provider. As you can see from this screen, we have yet most providers here on the call have yet to enter in their um, project um, projected numbers of participants and applicants for the program. So for my example, I stated that I expect to have 30 participants, but I've succeeded that with 73. And you will see that information here. And again, this is just a high-level overview of your grantee information. And you can either filter um, by grant number, project, in this case, it may be just one grant, and you can export this information in an Excel document. So as I open up the Excel, you know, and again, this is just a high level overview, your section, and again, it is just the same information that was on this main screen in an Excel spreadsheet. Any questions in regard to grant um, grant information? So there's a question in the chat from Ann Nicklin. When will an option to import from Excel be added to the system? Okay, uh, is this question in relation to reports or the option to import information related to participants and uh, recruits? And want to be clear, if you are not a program or service provider program administrator, you will not have access to the grantee information screen. Ann's response. Okay, I understand. Thank you for that, Ann. So with regards to like a bulk, a bulk upload of applicant information, that is something that we need to discuss with um, the Illinois work staff to see when we can um, work on that. So at this current time, we do not have that feature, but that is something that we can add on later on based on the priorities of the program, but that is contingent on the Illinois work staff, such which is Christina Norman. Okay. 
We understand that, um, Mike, and we will work our best to make sure we meet all the needs of the service providers as well. So thank you so much for your feedback. Any questions, additional questions related to the grantee information screen? I mean, report. So again, that was the grantee information report. I'm going to click on the report icon again. Illinois Works, and we're going to look at the service support services report. Again, this is the student support service report. You will have access to your assigned provider. And again, you can filter your information by race and ethnicity, veteran status, gender, and age. So in this case, for my text account, I am looking at Chicago Provider 1. Select the filter button. And so again, with this, you will see information related to outreach, underrepresented populations, and services. So in this case, for my particular organization, I have nine participants. Everyone is enrolled in the program. And this looks at gender information, right? And again, some people prefer not to um, answer information as it relates to gender. So we have race, age again, and the veteran status and services. And as you can see, we're still working on the services that's added to those assigned participants. So let's just say I just want to look up age bracket. So age bracket between 25 and 54. I'm going to filter again. And then as you can see, this information has changed based on that particular demographic of age in this age range. So it lets me know between the age range of 25 and 54, we have six participants and they're all enrolled. Their um, ethnicities have been selected. And as you can see, it says prefer not to answer. And we have one person that is Hawaiian or Pacific Island. Again, that age is still 25 to 54, and the services that needs to be added for each participant. Any questions in regards to the student support service um, services report? So at this time, if everyone can go into their Illinois Works account and retry the program completion and follow-up, you should have access to that screen now. And again, I'm going to share my screen again. So once you go into your your Illinois Works reporting system, you will see the main screen as it relates to customer information. I'm going to select, you have your provider. This one I'm going to filter. And you're going to find an applicant. So in this one, I'm going to choose Robert, Jane Roberts. So is everyone here on the screen now? Okay. Okay. All right. Remember, when you are on that customer 
screen, you're going to be on the tab Participant Recruitment and Engagement. And you're going to select an applicant, not someone that's an inquiry or enrolled. I'm sorry, you're going to select the person that's enrolled. My apologies. You can put in the chat that you are now on the screen. And you selected the individual that is now enrolled in the program. Okay. So now that we're at this screen, you should select the program completion and follow-up tab. And again, we'll wait three minutes for everyone to get to this screen again. Okay, so now that we are at the program completion follow-up task, I'm going to select that task. And the first step will be to enter in your enrollment status. Case notes are optional, but highly recommended. So if you can click on the add completion status, and select the completion status for the individual. If you have entered in the enrollment status, you can add a case note as well. To add a case note, click on Add Case Note. That's underneath the Add Completion Status. Looks like a hyperlink. If you have entered in your enrollment status and also case note, please state that in the chat, please. Okay. So let's just say your your person completed the program, you followed up with them through a case note, having great community um, conversations with them, letting them know about their status. And now they've met the requirements or if they um, decided not to complete the program, just follow up and see if they have any employment. So to do so, you will click on the Add Employer Follow-up button right here that's underneath. And please fill out all the fills that are required. And it has a red asterisk next to it. And once you've completed that, please let me know in the chat.
Again, if you have entered in the employer follow-up information, please do so. And once you've done that, just click um, complete or done in the chat. So I'll know to um, slow down or move forward. So based on what we've just done, enrollment status, um, case notes, and employer follow-up, are there any questions that you may have regarding those tools within the comp program completion follow-up tab? Okay, now we can look at, again, the grantee information screen is only for service provider program administrators at, that, at this time. So what we're going to do is just look at the look and fill for the student um, support services report. So Right here on the menu here, there is a icon that looks like a bar chart. If you hover over it, it will say report. Everyone can click on that icon. And when you get there, you're going to see program, project, and category, and you're going to select Illinois Work. Depending on your screen, again, I have multiple reports. You're going to select Student Support Service Report. And once you click on that, If you refresh your screen, you may see it again. If you just refresh your screen, once you've located the report, um, please let me know in the chat. So for those that are on the Student Support Services Report, you will see your provider. In this case, I have multiple, but I will just select my Chicago test one. And for you, you only just have access to your assigned um, organization. At this time, play around with the, the report. You can filter by race and ethnicity, veteran status, and again, um, you should see some data populate on this screen.
once you've done that, if you have any questions regarding this student support services report, and again, some of you may have not entered any services for your participants yet, so it may have a zero next to it. However, once you start adding your services, it will trigger into this report, and you can see it based on three types of services, essential skills training, related training instructions, whether it's classroom or virtual based or work-based learning as it relates to um, training and instruction. If you have any questions in regards to this particular report, please let me know. Giving everyone one more minute. Okay, so right now we're going to go to the credentials report. If you can click on the reports icon, and we'll go to the next report, which is credentials. So at this time, let's take a five-minute break to make sure everyone is at on the same um, pace. So we'll take a five-minute break, and we'll be back at 10.16.
Okay, everyone. So I am back. I hope everyone is back from their five minute break. So there was a question asked by Grace McGain. How will we be able to upload credentials so that these reports are populated? Great question. So to enter in the um, credentials for each individual, you will need to go to their career plan, also known as the training and services tab. So if I go back here, you will go on, it, it leads you back to the intake screen and that feature will be available in the training and services tab. And that feature will be available no later than Monday. So you'll be able to add the credentials that that particular person has earned. Once that's entered in, you can see the information here. So the various categories will be grantee, which will be your name, the program in which they took the training, the type of credential, the credential name, the provider, the date it was earned, the status, this IW application does not apply to you, but the program completion status and degree level is given a degree because the degree is a form of credential. But you'll have that information entered in there. So you can look at credentials from a customer view or overview of all the total number of credentials earned. Any questions in regards to the credentials report? Okay. Okay, so at this time, we're going to look at dashboards. So what I'm going to show you is a test dashboard. Again, there are some things that need to be um, done on the back end that we need to receive some additional information from the Illinois Works team. But I will show you how the dashboard looks so no one at this time has access to dashboards. So I'm going to click on dashboards and it's going to be a drop down menu and you'll see Illinois works reporting system. And again, you do not have access to the dashboards at this time. So this is your dashboard, right? So this is the Illinois Works dashboard. So you will select your provider. Again, it's already defaulted. And I'm going to select Chicago Provider 1. Again, just like similar to the report that has those filters, race and ethnicity, veteran status, gender, and age. In this case, I just want to see a high-level overview of everything. So I will select filter. So as I stated in the presentation, you have various sections. So the first one is red flags, the different columns, the actual number, the percentage, the best, how are you doing, the actual versus the expected. There are certain um, benchmarks that you must make, um, meet for this program based on your organization and a network. Within a network, what's the network's average? How are you looking um, as an organization compared 
to other providers in the network. So we have red flags. Again, as I expressed in the presentation, you look at those areas in which you need to follow up with absences, post assessments, and past due follow up dates. So this lets you know an example like this, you have, okay, two individuals that have an issue when it comes to absences, or there may be some post assessments that have not been submitted in. So this just indicates in red that you need to do some follow-up um, immediately to ensure that everyone, as it relates to the participant, is on the right path. So you also have intake information. Remember back on the recruitment um, page, if they were closed, they were hot, that means they are in the program warm. I like it, but I'm, I'm, I want to do it, but I'm not too sure. Cold means they're on a fence, and then closed meaning that they do not want to participate in the program anymore. So you can look at that status again. You'll see application status, how many people are enrolled, re-enrolled in a program, not enrolled. Then the next section, again, is going more into participant engagement. You'll see this broken down into a number of applicant participants currently receiving services. And again, this color coded on the dashboard lets you know yellow is a warning, like, okay, I need to follow up with this person. Red is a red flag and green means that you are doing well in that particular area. Everyone is meeting the goals based on what you see here. So as you can see, there's a whole list of participant engagement ranging from the number of applicant participants from wraparound services, student support services, and transitional services, and you'll have that information here. Then again, outside of the credentials um, report, you can also receive information on credentials earned here on the dashboard. So you have the types of trainings listed out here. Okay. And then completion information, again, based on that completion, program completion and follow-up tab, that information that you enter there will reflect on this dashboard. So you'll see the number of people that's incomplete, completed unsuccessfully, and again, you'll see actual numbers, the percentage, and again, this is just a test dashboard, so the numbers may be a little skewed completed pre-apprenticeship program and received transitional services. You have that information outlined here, complete with an open transition service. You'll see total, again, it's code, color coding. If there's anything that you need to look for to make some corrections, this dashboard is helpful, along with that person's individual overview page as well. Then you'll have information related to provider and employer and sponsorship relationships, type of relationships you establish throughout the program, to be union relationships, contract and subcontract relationships, or non-union apprenticeship. Then again, we'll go further into the post-program active tracking. So, one of the things that is highly encouraged is to track the progress of participants. So it's looking at four quarters. It's based on quarters. So in the first quarter or fourth quarter, depending on what that looks like, you'll see, okay, number of people um, not enrolled in the construction um, industry. This lets you know the follow-up, let's just say they've taken this, but why they didn't enroll in a construction industry. So you can look further into details to find out why, finding out some more qualitative information, who's in college, et cetera, if you look down here. 
And again, these are additional benchmarks. This is related to second benchmark long-term tracking. And this is speaking of waiting list status if they are waiting to be enrolled in a Department of Labor Registered Apprenticeship Program, what their apprenticeship status is, journey person status, exit more than two quarters ago. So this just really goes a little bit more in depth when you're doing long-term tracking. And again, this is only applicable to the Illinois Works team, so they can make adjustments to improve or um, see some successes in the program furthermore. And again, this section is for the Illinois Works team. Any questions regarding the dashboard? You can put your questions in the chat at this time. I'm not seeing any messages coming through, Latoya. Okay, thank you. So at this time, we're going to leave it to open questions. If you have any questions in regards to the Illinois Works Reporting System at this time, I'm going to open up the floor. And if you need any technical assistance, that is the end of the demo. Um, again, I encourage all the service um, program um, administrators to enter in their grantee information and please forward me their um, test data. So once we've done a purge of that data, we'll just erase all the test data from your particular organization. Any questions in regards to the system as a whole at this time? Well, I'm going to pull something. There were some inquiries within the last week regarding applicants and trying to enter in that information. Has everyone that contact me via email or one-on-one -on -one Zoom or teams been able to access and started to enter in their applicants for their assigned organization? You can just put yes or no in the chat. Okay, I see no one has questions. I will still be here. If you want to go into the system, start entering some applicants or recruits, um, I'm here at this time to provide any technical support that you may need. Okay, this is a question. I'm wondering generally about how to upload report or documents such as MOUs. Okay. Great question, Grace. So if you go, let me share my screen again. Go back. One moment.
Okay, I am back. So there's two ways to upload documents, but for if you are a program administrator, you would go to provider information, um, provider info. You'll see this icon here that looks like an open folder. You will select that. And so on this screen, you will see a tab that says File Upload. You will click on that tab. And I'll wait till you get there. Okay, great. So once you see this, you'll select your project. In the provider, and then you're going to select upload file. So there are those various categories agency MOU, agency contracts, agency staff training, etc. And you can um, select one of those categories and then add the document there and provide any additional description. And then you'll select the upload. You're welcome, Grace, anytime. If there are any other questions, then I'm here.
So at this time, is anyone in the system entering their um, recruit or applicants into the system if they have any questions in regards to intake, screen, or training and services, please let me know. And for those that have a service provider program um, administrator, um, you can utilize this time to enter in your grantee information as it will have an effect for your service providers in entering accurate information related to training and services.
Are there any questions while you're navigating the Illinois Works Reporting System? You can add them in the chat at this time. Okay, we'll do um, maybe just five more minutes if people are still navigating the system and, and have questions. Um, but if you don't have any uh, questions in the next five minutes, that's okay. We were always happy to answer questions. Um, I know Latoya has offered um, and has been conducting one-on-one -on -one sessions. We also have a whole suite of instructional manuals um, that uh, SIU has created that walk you through these steps, uh, really step-by-step. -step. So. Um, we'll just do five more minutes. If you have any questions, please let us know in the chat, uh, and LaToya is happy to address them. Um, otherwise, we'll uh, just sign off in about five minutes.
Okay, we are right about that time. I am not seeing any questions in the chat. Um, so we can go ahead and end our session for the day. I did go ahead and put uh, Latoya's email address in the chat for all of you. I also put a link for the Illinois Works Partner Guide. Uh, so I'm sure some of you have explored that site already. But just so you know, all of our training recordings live there along with detailed instructions, our grantee manuals there, all of our templates, exhibits, um, basically anything that you might need to access from us, uh, please visit that site. And of course, you can always uh, email myself, Christine Flynn, the grant manager uh, for the pre-apprenticeship program. I will throw my email in the chat now. Uh, but thank you all so much for attending today, and we will uh, see you at our next session on uh, March 3rd. Thank you so much.